Here is a video for problems 7 and 8, the last two problems, on our chapter 4 review. Um, this first one here is going to be the roulette problem similar to what we saw in lesson 424. And so we have two sets happening here. We have the first subset being this already listed 1, 5, and 9. We have that set. And we have the set of the first 12 numbers, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And so those are our two subsets that we're going to work with. We're going to find the union and the intersection of those two subsets and then the probability of that union and intersection. And so thinking about the intersection, the intersection is just um, the numbers that are repeated in both sets. That are going to be the numbers that we include in our intersection. So 1 is in both sets, so 1 is in our intersection. 5 is in both sets, so it's in our intersection. And 9 is in both sets, so 9 is in our intersection. And that would be our complete intersection because that's all the numbers that are in both sets. Now the union's a little bit different. The union is the combination of both sets without having the numbers in our intersection be repeated. And so when I start making my union here, I'm going to list all the numbers in both sets, and I'm not going to repeat the ones that are in both. And so I have 1, and I'm not going to include the other one. I'm just going to use that one. I'm going to have 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm just listing 5 once, and then 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 again, just listed once, 10, 11, and 12. So I'm combining, you can see I'm combining both sets here and just not repeating the ones that get repeated because they're in both sets. So 1 is listed once, 5 is listed once, and 9 is listed once, okay? And then that is my complete union. Those are all the numbers that are going to win the first bet, the second bet, or both bets, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the probability that the intersection actually hits. And what we need to remember is that there are 38 numbers on a roulette board. And I will be posting this picture with the test tomorrow. Um, and I probably should have posted it with the review to remind us that there are 38 total numbers that you could get because there's one through 36 and then zero and double zero. So 38 total numbers. And in our intersection, there's only three. So there is a three out of 38 chance that our intersection hits. So our probability is three out of 38 because 38 total numbers, three numbers are in our intersection. For the union, again, it's gonna be out of 38 numbers, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 numbers in there. And so our probability would be 12 out of 38 because there's 12, uh, 12 possible out of the 38 total numbers, 38 total outcomes that could happen. And so we have our intersection probability, union, and our probability of that, okay? Now, let's get into number eight, which is our expected value problem. And we're looking for the expected value after 10 spins. Now, what I do in these problems, and this goes back to our last lesson, 425, is I find the probability after one spin, and then I'm gonna multiply that number by 10. And to find our probability after one spin, what we do is we take the fraction of the circle multiplied by its value, and we add up this chain until we complete the whole circle. And so the first one is going to be 1 8, 1 8 times 20, because 1 8 of the circle has a value of 20, plus 1 8 times 100, plus, and I'm going to keep doing this addition, these chain of multiplication and addition until I complete the whole circle. And so then I have 1 fourth and negative 5. I have 1 fourth and 1. And then this is going to look ugly, sorry. And then I'm going to have adding 1 fourth and negative 2. Now if, I, now if I do this, and I can use my calculator to help me, if I figure out what this equals, that's my expected value after one spin. And so let's do that. 1 eighth times 20, well, that's the same thing as 20 divided by 8, and that gives me 2.5 plus 1 eighth times 100, which is 100 divided by 8, and that is 12.5. And then I have 1 fourth times negative 5, so this is really like going to be subtraction here because this is going to be a negative. Um, so that's 1 fourth times negative 5 is the same thing as negative 5 divided by 4, so this is minus 1.25, plus 
one fourth times one. Again, this is a plus again because it's positive, plus 0 0.25 plus the last one, which is one fourth times negative two. Oh, so this is actually subtraction, not addition, because it's going to be negative. So it's minus 0 0.5 because negative two times one fourth is 0 0.5. Now I'm going to add all these up using my calculator. And so I do 2.5 plus 12.5 minus 1.25 plus 0 0.25 minus 0.5. And I got $13.5 is my expected value after one spin, just one spin. So if I want 10 spins, I need to multiply this by 10. And if I multiply that by 10, I got my expected value to be $135 after 10 spins. Okay, so the big things to take away there is we always, at least the way I started is I want to say, okay, what's my expected value after one spin? So I set up this um, chain of multiplication and addition until I complete the whole circle. I then use my calculator to say, okay, that's what every value is. I find out that pro or I find out the expected value after one spin, multiply it by how many spins there are, and I get my answer. Okay. Any further questions from the review or anything that you want to see more from nine, uh, this problem seven or eight, just let me know. I'll be happy to um, find another problem that I can explain maybe in a different way um, or explain it again to maybe help you more.